Welcome to this presentation on the estimation of forest above ground biomass with C band scatterometer observations. This work is motivated by the fact that uh, knowledge of the terrestrial carbon cycle is quite uncertain because of sparse and irregular observations on the ground. If we look in, instead of satellite observations, there are plenty of observations already since the 1970s. Uh, but several of these have not yet been used to quantify the terrestrial carbon cycle. One of these is actually from the European Remote Sensing uh, Mission, WINSCAT uh, sensor, and uh, METOP ASCAT sensor. And uh, together they have been obtaining an almost unbroken time series of observations in 1991 at 0.25 degree spatial resolution. Now, if you want to retrieve forest biomass from an observation of the backscatter, we want to use a parametric model that expresses the forest backscatter in terms of horizontal and vertical properties of the forest. These are quantified by the two variables canopy density, eta, and vegetation height, h. But here we have the problem that we are not really relating to biomass. So the further step that we need to do in this model is to introduce two allometries. One that relates the canopy density to height, and one that then relates the height to biomass. The canopy density to height allometry is explained by the relationship that we identified between uh, ISAT class uh, metrics of density and height. Uh, there is a very strong relationship, and, but it, it differs in space, as we can see from the two plots on the left-hand side. If we then uh, go and estimate the parameter Q globally, uh, then we see that this parameter Q in the uh, allometry has a strong spatial gradient. The same can be said for the allometry relating uh, above ground biomass and height. We use a power law function in this case, and this power law function also with the two parameters P1 and P2 was estimated uh, locally. And we see that uh, in the plots on the right hand side, the two parameters change very much. That depends on the forest structure. So once we have set the two allometries, we can then take a daily observation of um, scatterometer observations which would be the top left panel. Estimate the two model parameters, sigma ground and sigma vec, and we do this with self-calibration. Then we interpolate the measurements uh, to avoid that there is a gap in the coverage, which then would be the bottom um, row of uh, our illustration, and invert the water cloud model uh, together with the allometries to generate a daily map of above ground biomass. Well, we know that a single estimate of above-ground biomass from a C-band measurement is quite uncertain. So what we do is to combine, in a weighted average, all daily maps of AGB from a certain year and generate a weighted average. So in the end, we obtain from 1992 to 2019 yearly maps of above-ground biomass at 0.25 degree spatial resolution. This is an example of one of the maps. And what we also did was to compute the uncertainties. Um, uncertainties were quantified for each of the model parameters, for each input observation, for the allometries, and were propagated throughout the retrieval chain. And uh, this map uh, here actually shows um, the uncertainty quantified as standard deviation relative to the estimated AGB. Validity of the estimates are quantified by taking averages at 0.25 degree of high-resolution LIDAR maps and large-scale inventory measurements. And the plot here shows that there is a strong agreement between the averages taken from the in-situ measurements and the values that we have estimated with our Biomascat approach. Having strong confidence in the estimates, we can then conclude this presentation by saying that we have a retrieval approach developed and applied to dense stacks of C-band backscatter observation by scatterometers. Uh, weighted averaging and a parametric model are key actually to obtain the results that we have shown here. And we know that uh, ASCAT, for example, will operate throughout this decade and future observations are also guaranteed. So we can extend the time series of IGB maps over the next uh, decades, providing therefore valuable input to climate and vegetation model communities. Thank you very much for your attention.